Okay, here we are on Steven Anderson's uh, YouTube channel. And I just want to show you something that's kind of interesting here. Uh, here you can see, this is it here. There's the website. We'll click on that. Okay, now I want to just show you something here about one of his doctrinal stands and the fact that this man is a hypocrite. Doctrinal statement. Down here, we believe that homosexuality, first of all, it's not called that in the Bible, it's called sodomy. But it says, uh, we believe that homosexuality is a sin and an abomination which God punishes with the death penalty. Okay? He says that it's the death penalty that comes for sodomy. Over here is a sermon. Now listen to this. problem of sodomy in our world today. He said if a man lied with mankind as he lied with the woman, if a man lied also with mankind as he lied with the woman, even both of them have committed abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood should be pumped. I didn't write that. That is Bible. That is the truth. And you say, oh, that was back then. Oh, and I'm sure that God just loves back then. No, he, he said they should be put to death. Okay. Okay. So, in other words, we're still under the Old Testament. See, he's non-dispensational, so he ignores verses of Scripture in the New Testament that talks about effeminate, you know, where Paul says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are cleaned, you know. Uh, you don't have to put uh, sodomites to death today. You can actually witness to them and get them saved. Now, they have to turn from their sin if they're going to get saved. Okay, they have to repent of their sin in the sense of they can't go on being a sodomite after they get saved. Okay? But a, a forced death penalty for it? Eh, I don't know. He's going back to the Old Testament. But, you know, we're, this isn't the main issue of this video that I'm putting together here. I just want to show you that this guy's a hypocrite. Okay? Let's go back to his website here. Go back to home. Now here you have the movie that he just came out with this this ridiculous absurd uh, film uh, after the tribulation and it says that you can purchase the uh, can be viewed here um, I think is this the one where I wanted to oh no okay that takes you to the thing this video but then you can buy the DVD here this is where I wanted to go okay and there you see the film I actually saw over here that you can get the uh, film and a t-shirt combo. You know, isn't that special? <laughs> you know, uh, but we'll go back here. I'm going to show you something. Here you have, this is the DVD. Now look down here. Directed and produced by, it's kind of hard to read, but it says Paul Wittenberger, or Wittenberger if you want to pronounce it the right way. Um, but Paul Wittenberger, okay? He's the executive producer and the director and the producer of this DVD. Okay? You say, what's the big deal with Paul Wittenberger? Well, let me just show you something here. Interesting article by Matt Quigley. Alex Jones promotes Baptist heretic. And it goes down through here. There's a lot of points against Steve Anderson that are made here. But uh, look at this. This film was made by Paul Wittenberger, whose last two films entailed scaremongering about fluoride in the water, which fluoride is bad, the great calling, and chemtrails, what are they spraying? Okay, but now look at this. Wittenberger's prior hist work history as cameraman and electrician and production assistant, <sighs> come on here, production assistant in a slew of typical Hollywood garbage films, including the lesbian propaganda movie Itty Bitty titty campaign. I'm sorry to have to even say that. Shows that if he is a Christian, he is a rather sorry and hypocritical one. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't even, I wouldn't even say the guy's a Christian to work on this thing. You say, well, that's just what he's saying. Really? Let's go here. Here you have Paul Wittenberger, camera and electrical department, director of miscellaneous crew. Look at these. Working for Hollywood Films. Working on the, on the you know, film crews here. You know, the race to which mountain? W I T C H. You know, <laughs> that's nice. That looks like a real good film to work on if you're a saved man. You know, but uh, let's let's just get down through here. Look at what this Paul Wittenberger worked on, and uh, right there it is. See, in 2007. Hmm. 
and I'm not even going to click on the thing, okay, because it's just so vile and filthy. I'm not even going to go there. Um, it's I just I don't need to vex anybody. But uh, there you have it. I'll go back to this one and um, go to this article. Where's it at here? Uh, click on this, the movie title. And there it is at Wikipedia. And it says about it's a feminist, lesbian-related comedy film directed by Jamie Babbitt. Okay, there's the cover of it. I mean, and you say, well, uh, well, you know, maybe it was just a, 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 you know, he produced the video and that was about it. Well, how about uh, this video? Watch this. Hey, everybody, Pastor Anderson here with Paul Wittenberger. Uh. Paul Wittenberger's in uh, Steve Anderson's home. Wait a second, though. I thought that uh, the doctrinal statement here on Steve Anderson's uh, church website says that homosexuality is a sin and an abomination which God punishes with the death penalty. And yet, he'll have a man that worked as a electrician in a sodomy film in his home and produces video uh, hypocrite what do you mean oh uh, the sodomies you know you should get the death penalty you should be you should kill you know sodomites and everything and yet he has his film after the tribulation produced by a man who worked for sodomites do you see the double standard here Okay, I want to do another quick little video here showing this uh, little obnoxious, spoiled brat, false prophet, uh, screaming at his congregation. Uh, this is not the way a mature pastor would act. A mature pastor um, is supposed to be an example to his flock. He's supposed to care for them. And I'm just going to show you here a little bit of this. And also watch how he treats his Bible. Did you bother to read it before you handed it out? Did you read it first before you handed it out? Probably not. And I can guess why. Because the same kind of person who's too lazy to read the back of the church track is the same kind of person who's too lazy to read their Bible cover to cover. Well, why don't you suck your thumb and, you know, hold your little blankie too while you're at it. Maybe hold your breath and... You know, throw a little temper tantrum. I mean, what a child. What a novice. And it's the same kind of people who want to go by what somebody says instead of what this book says. And listen to me. This church has always stood for the same thing and it came out of this book right here. Uh, is that how a man with the Holy Spirit in him would treat the Holy Word of God? When the Bible says that uh, God's word is, is exalted above his name. Is this how you treat your, God's holy word? You slam it and you hit it with your hand? And let me tell you something, buddy. You better read this book and you better read the track and you better know what you're doing. You say, why are you so mad? Let me tell you why I'm so mad. Because I'm sick and tired of... Because I didn't uh, get a nap this afternoon. That's why I'm so mad. What Faithful Word Baptist Church is turning into. Whoa, I'm sick and tired of what Faithful Word Baptist Church is turning into. Well, whose fault would that be? The shepherd of the flock? If a church falls apart, it's the pastor's fault. He's condemning himself here. He's too stupid to even realize it. This is a great church. This is the best church I've ever been to. Oh, boy, a prideful statement. This is the best church I've ever been to. <laughs> oh, okay. And I don't like what it's turning into, because I'll tell you what it's turning into. It's turning into a bunch of people who don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, I, I, gee, I wonder why that would be. Maybe because you're the pastor of it? Let me just give you some scripture here real quick to show you what a pastor is supposed to be according to the Word of God. It says here in 1 Timothy 3, 1, This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, Bible word for a pastor there, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober. Is this being sober that we're watching there, this attitude of Steve Anderson? I don't think so. How about of good behavior? 
given to hospitality, apt to teach. Steve Anderson couldn't teach the Bible to save his life. Not given to wine, no striker. That's supposed to be violent. Not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Not a brawler. Not covetous. You know, kind of like uh, going to the secular world to sell your video. You know? Let me show you another verse here in Second Timothy. Paul, by the way, the, ver the books of First and Second Timothy, Paul is writing to a young preacher, the young preacher Timothy. And here he's giving instructions to Timothy. Second Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Disobeyed by Steve Anderson. He does not rightly divide the word of truth. He refuses to. He's not a real preacher. But look down here. Verse 24, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but to be gentle unto all men. Huh? Gentle? Hmm. Apt to teach. Patient. There we see it again. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledge, acknowledging of the truth. Meekness. You don't need to yell and scream at your congregation if you are a pastor. You are supposed to be calm and collected and in control of yourself. First Peter chapter 5. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. You watch over them. You protect your flock. You don't scream at them and threaten them and, and belittle them and kick the pulpit and throw a little temper tantrum. Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. like uh, Kind of like Steve Anderson. But look at this. But being in samples to the flock. Well, if uh, Steve Anderson is an example to the flock, then I guess then his flock should go around and kick pulpits and throw things on the floor and go into belligerent little tantrums. Okay? But watch this one. This is even better yet. Check this one out. Hey, why do you think this country elected a devil like Barack Obama? Why? Because the news media crammed him down our throat. Hey, you know what? Get the hell out of here if you don't like this kind of thing. Well, get, get the H out of here? I'm not even going to say it. He uses profanity? Because, you know, Barack Obama's a devil. Barack Obama's a partial birth abortion. If you don't like to hear the truth, then get the hell out of my church. Oh, my church. Oh, you know, wow. Okay. Neither is being lords over God's heritage. Oh, it's my church. It's my church. And, and, and here he says it's falling apart and there's problems. You know. What an admission of guilt. This isn't a real pastor here. A real pastor does not need, need to scream and berate his congregation and yell at them. A real preacher is going to be a servant to the congregation. He's going to rule with love and teaching and instruction in the word of God and charity. Yeah, you can yell and stuff, but yell at sin. Yell and rebuke sin. Rebuke the world. You don't need to scream at your congregation and throw this little temper tantrum where you're you're hitting the Bible and throwing the Bible around and you know, I mean, it's just so crazy. This isn't a real preacher. This is a novice, a child, a false prophet.